What's good, fam? It's your boy Devin back with another video, and we're gonna be reacting to Do All Asian American Parents Think the Same from Spectrum? But on Jubilee, we're gonna get right into this, but before we do. bit tired i just got finished working out and uh yeah it was pretty crazy uh <laughs> i was gonna record it but i didn't but next one i am but yeah man if y'all haven't subscribed yet subscribe to the channel hit the post notification bell click on all so when i upload y'all will know every video that pops up okay let's get into this so special. i was valedictorian of my junior high and my dad said it's only junior high Getting a B was like getting an F, you know, the Asian F. I am happy with whatever career my child chooses. Three, two, one, go. Three, yes. Some whatever you wow. Um, I'm a bartender, and obviously Asian parents, they don't think, oh, my kid will be a bartender one day. That's why I'll be happy with whatever she chooses. As long as she's not hurting herself or others, and she has a stable career, then that's fine with me. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I disagree, because uh, I, I believe he will make mistakes. He'll get jobs that he doesn't like, but... I don't think I'll be happy with whatever he does, like if he becomes a drug dealer or <laughs> if he just pursues what he likes without thinking about that impact on others. I think that's not good enough for me, even if he's happy. I believe he has to pursue something that's right, not just right for him. Yeah, I did tell her after college you can do whatever you like and you should find a job right away and the office very nice and nine to five. After a couple months, I said, Mom, that's not my life. And she uh, just uh, quit the job, and she's feeling, she's happy now. So I am support her, and at least she tried. I think if my children are not happy and not successful, then I'm failing somewhere as a parent. So it's very important for me to support them in whatever they want to be in their lives. I want them to be able to like move forward from a job. I don't want them to be complacent. Mm -hmm. Or just like, this is good enough, when I know they are capable of doing more. But I think some people are fine just being here, and that's okay. They don't want to look for that next step. I didn't want to go to college at all, but my parents wanted me to go to college, so I went to college. I graduated mm -hmm. in theater and journalism. I could have done something with either one of those. But I was like five months pregnant when I graduated, so I didn't even get time to start my career. But don't you think that if you have a certain qualification, you can always go back to it? If you want to yeah, do theater or journalism later in life. Yeah, I could. But if I was to work in the field that I graduated with, I would not be happy. Like, I just already know it. And what's what's the point? I'm just living like a robot, doing the same thing over and over again to make, again, to make my parents happy. Mm. I consider myself... I'll say something about that at the end of the video. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I was growing up, I was valedictorian of my junior high, and my dad said, it's only junior high. <laughs> getting a B was like getting an F, you know, the Asian F. Okay, if he gets an F, yeah, that's bad, but a B is not an F. And my mom, she was always pushing me to be a doctor, so I knew growing up, the one thing I didn't want to be was, I never wanted to be a doctor. And I'm going to be more lenient because I know if I push him too hard, it's going to backfire like it backfired on my parents. My expectations was for them to go to college at a minimum. And uh, that's one thing I always uh, stress. At least I would try to provide uh, tutoring if they needed it. I didn't expect them to come home straight A's or things like that. As, as long as I knew they were doing the best that they could and then I helped them as much as I could. I think I'm a very friendly mom to my kids. Maybe because my husband is a tiger dad and I'm always trying to balance. So one is enough for the house. Frankly, I'm so surprised to see so many of you guys here. I was expecting most of you to be here because that's almost a reputation that Asian parents are tiger by nature. I don't agree with you. I'm Asian, very Indian, but I'm not. 
It's a hard to find a balance. Yeah. You, you cannot. It's also about trusting your children. They know what's best for them. Oh, that's well, it's not sort of pushing them. It's sort of pointing them the right direction. The question is, how yeah, much... Yeah, pointing them doesn't mean you have to be a tiger parent. You can do it softly, politely. They understand. They're sensible. But there's but, different degrees of tiger parent. You've heard the extreme. I think everyone finds their own tiger parent in themselves of what you think works for your family. Parenting doesn't come with an instruction book. No, not no. So every yeah. parent is different and every child is different. Yeah. I believe it is sometimes appropriate to use physical discipline on children. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. <laughs> yes, it's not the only one on this side. Well, I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I do believe in hit, hitting my kids, not out of anger, not beating them up, but I believe it's appropriate to teach them discipline. Now, when I was growing up, my dad beat me up with a broomstick, and the stick broke, <laughs> and it was my fault. <laughs> now, that's wrong. I don't agree with that, but I believe kids have to learn fear and discipline in a controlled environment like that? Yeah, I think I've spanked my kids a couple times, especially if they put themselves in danger. It's been a long time. I mean, they were very mm -hmm. little. Um, yeah. I think it very temporary because as you raise them, they don't need that, you know what I mean, the, that shock value. They just, you know, your words work. But on the other hand, when I see white kids at Walmart and they don't care about their parents, they're <laughs> screaming and yelling and cussing at their dad mm -hmm. like whoa where is the fear i think nine times out of ten when kids get spanked it's because we can't think of anything else to do people say it's not out of anger but most of the time it is out of anger because you're frustrated they're not listening there's also love behind it love for them it's not yeah. always frustration while i was growing up probably half my school would have been terminated because i used to get spanked a lot by my teachers. So I think it was more culturally acceptable that time. I, and I agree with you. I think it's more about not doing out of anger. You said the same thing too. And also that they can understand why this is happening. And then you talk to them after that, right? Yeah. And actually, I used to feel terribly guilty that I would spank them and then I would sort of tell them I'm sorry, but that's the reason why you got spanked. So I think it was more of a teaching learning moment as well. I expect my children to take care of me as I get older. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> they agreed to every fucking thing. <laughs> it depends upon what you mean by taking care of you. It's not holding your hand. You know, if I reflect about, you know, what my father expects of me, who lives with us, he just wants to talk. He just wants us to be there with him, you know, be together and have a meal together. Well, this is how I define it. When you're old, will you be in a senior home center or will you be living with your son or daughter? When I'm old, I think I'll be at a senior center or a senior home and my son will support me by visiting and things like that, but he's not going to be living in the same house with me. I would agree with you somewhat. My husband and I have made a lot of sacrifices for our children. And they're really appreciative of that. And I don't think uh, we'll need their financial help, but emotional support is very important. I don't want my daughter to think that she owes me and has to take care of me. I do want to be, you know, obviously emotionally be there with her always, but I don't want her to feel like it's a burden and I don't want that responsibility to ever be on her because she didn't ask for it, so. I think even just staying in touch even a yeah. phone call, it's important. That's taking care of parents. I prefer my children marry someone from the same culture. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I think it should be children's choice who they want to marry and spend the rest of their lives with. I am an Indian and my daughter-in-law is Chinese and I'm very happy with my son's decision. My dad told me that I have to marry someone who's Korean. The reason he gave was because of the language barrier and the cultural barriers. 
but that doesn't exist for me and my son anymore because I could speak his language and his culture perfectly fine. So he could marry whoever he wants. I was always told, you know, marry Asian, marry Chinese. Um, I, I, my my kids can marry whoever, but at the same time, it'd be, I think for myself, it'd be nice if they marry someone similar in a sense of just at least values and things like that. That's us. You yeah, know, we so, are Asian American, but our children are more Americans. They don't think like that. My, I, they've expressed to me that they would prefer to marry Asian. My, my children. Maybe have, because they're younger. At one time, they're right? young. Are they younger right oh, now? Oh no, no, no. They're, they're adults, and they. That's what they told me. But if they choose not and they change their mind, I'm okay with that too. I would be comfortable talking to my children about dating and sex. Three, two, absolutely one. Dating, yes. Sex, no. Not in details, at least I would be embarrassed. I don't think my children would be comfortable either. I wish that they would have talked to me more about stuff like that. Like, I found out everything on my own. Again, I think it's just the whole, a lot of Asian families just don't really talk about stuff like that. They don't really talk about dating, sex, feelings. Well, that's why they have sex set in school, <laughs> yeah. right? They want to listen, listen. Please. They don't want to. Well, what can you do? have to pass the course, so yeah. they have to listen. Well, that's the thing. I, I don't want them to learn about that from school, from Hollywood movies, Thank or you. even their friends. I want them to be able to see my perspective, not that they have to agree with me, but I want to be the primary teacher of those mm -hmm. things and not learn from sex ed from school. Mm -hmm. I would be proud of my child if they identified as LGBTQ+. Three, two... One, go. I, I mean, I don't care who she ends up loving, what, whatever, I, you know, that's her love. It's whatever she wants, and that's fine with me. Um, I remember my son, when he was nine, he asked me, would you love me if I was gay? And I said, uh, yes, I would love you, no matter what. He goes, I'm not, but just checking. <laughs> and he was nine years old when he did that. And I, I just started laughing. And I was like, you know, I guess as a parent, you don't deal with it until that comes up. Kind of wakes you up a little bit. When I was growing up, I mean, this, the term didn't even exist. I mean, there are still countries in the world that don't talk about it and don't show it in the movies, and they're actually censored. And the place where I grew up, it was a taboo. Yeah, it used to be an Asian stigma that Asians were not LGBTQ. It was like white people and stuff. Now, I agree with most of you that I would love my kids no matter how they identify us. But I believe that LGBTQ is either unnatural and also the activity is sinful. I'm not going to force my kids to believe what I believe. I'm not going to force them into something that they're not. But I will have concern. I'll still love my kids. And I'll learn how to express it, but I wish they were not. I believe Asian Americans are a model minority. Three, two, one, go. Mm -hmm. I always hear this from my friends who are not Asians, who say, you guys do it right. You know, you focus on education, you focus on family, you focus on making sure that you're actually connected to your roots. I think when I think of like the term model minority, I think someone that thinks they're, they're the model, right? So they're better. And I don't think the way that we were raised doesn't mean that should be the way for everyone else, you know? But we are a very hardworking community, all of us. And Indians are seen as doctors, engineers, techies and the highest income earning group in America. And it does put some pressure on our children. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Which is not bad, which is good. Yeah. As an adult who had really strict parents, like I felt a lot of pressure to be the model minority, especially because we came here to America, because I was born in Japan. I was like, I have to be perfect. Why did we come here if I'm not going to be perfect? But that little sense of competition at the back of your mind is also good. Makes them grow higher. Well, my the little voice in the back of my mind is my parents always. It, which is like, oh, be better, be better, you know, do better. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. What if your parents did not push you to become better? 
I, I suspect, you know, if I don't tell my kids to do something and say, okay, go and do whatever you need to, and let's say they don't, they land up in a bad place. In a way, I rather hear my kids complain about me being pushy and point them the right direction rather than coming and telling me later in the life, wish you were a little bit strict and you gave me more direction and you supported mm. me in a different way. Right, that's why I think a little bit of pressure is good, but too much pressure will break anybody. And that I is, think Asian families is. don't know what the breaking point is. And we're still learning. I mean, me as a parent, and what, what I don't want. Like, I want to be a grandma, but that's not what my daughter wants right now, maybe. But, you yeah, know, that's, yeah. it's their choice, it's their life. I'm not going to. Yeah, we are yeah. different generations. Yeah, so You're younger than my daughter. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we're yeah, talking, we talk different. things yeah. differently. I, I yeah. think your openness is yeah. great. Yeah. You're, you're seeing things a lot brighter, whereas I think maybe I was more old school. I, I don't know. It's, it's great. I, I think it's great. Um, just We're all trying to figure it out still. I just wanted to just say this. Um, they actually have parents they force their kids into something that they don't want to do. Now, growing up with now your parents, they always had dreams of what they wanted to do. Sometimes it don't go too well and they just keep it pushing. But listen, if there's something that you want to do, that I mean, that big ass dream that you have in your mind that you dream about, every fucking night if there's something that you want to do and it's that big go for that shit with the most undeniable hunger do that shit man do it and another thing teach your kids about sex talk to them about sex fuck all that little sex ed should teach them the fuck that you should be the first teacher to your kids about sex. And don't be uncomfortable. You've done it. <laughs> You've done it. Some of you actually went a little bit. Some of y'all did a little bit more. <laughs> Some did less. But talk to your kids about it. You should always be the first person to actually talk to them about that shit. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, this was pretty cool, like I said. So, yeah, make sure y'all like the video, comment down below, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Peace, love, blessings. See you on the next video.